This is going to be your guide for getting competitive Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. And done. So that's how you train Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield, or at least it's one way. Pretty much the reason why I'm doing this guide is because I've been seeing a lot of people wanting to get into competitive Pokemon because of the Isle of Armor, but they don't quite know where to start. And a lot of the guides I did, that was months ago back when Pokemon Sword and Shield came out, so there's also different methods, better methods, and not really everything in one place. If it ends up helping you in any way, don't forget to leave a like and share with your friends. If any of your friends have been asking about how to get into competitive Pokemon, this is going to be the video for them. So what I just showed was hyper training, and that's going to be one of the main ways of getting Pokemon just instantly competitive, and all you have to do is play the game. So you're going to need a lot of experience candies, but you can get these through events or just doing max raid battles. I've just been doing max raid battles, I have several hundred medium candy, which is enough to actually get some Pokemon to like level 100, so I'd use half my stack, but... Boom, that's what it takes to get a Pokemon to level 100. Uh, extra large candies are going to be a lot better, it takes a lot less of those. So we were to do this on Cinderace, only 34. I'm sitting on 7 competitive Pokemon right there. Plus the ones from medium candy and plus the ones from the large candy. I can make multiple teams of competitive Pokemon just from the natural items I have from playing the game somewhat regularly, maybe a bit tryhard. Now the reason why you would want to get a Pokemon to level 100 is because of hyper training. So if you're watching this video, I'm making it on the assumption that you at least know the very basics of competitive Pokemon, such as effort values and individual values. If you don't, you can find some links in the description down below to get you caught up to speed, but hyper training is going to max out a Pokemon's potential stats. So you could either just have best in everything, or you can have hyper train. Now some people might wonder how you get the judge fun function, so if you notice on the bottom, it says plus symbol, for Judge, if you get 6 wins in the Battle Tower, you can then check the IVs of all your Pokemon. This guide also isn't going to touch on breeding too much, because I already have an in-depth guide about that. This is mostly what happens when you have your competitively ready-ish Pokemon, and you need effort values, you need move sets, you just need to finish your team in the most efficient way. That's what this video is going to be about. But for getting Dittos, the only thing that's changed is now there's a Ditto Island on the Isle of Armor, which is the same thing as the Ditto Den, and it makes it a little better to get 5 and 6 IV Dittos. Also, a couple months ago, Game Freak did an event where every Ditto was 5 IVs, so it was really easy to roll for a 6 IV Ditto. Hopefully there's another event like that in the future. If you missed out, it's going to be a little tougher, but if you've been hanging in there the whole time, you probably have a really good breeding setup established, but we still need to get your Pokemon caught up. Now, hyper training is what I showed earlier on in the video, and to accomplish that, you need bottle caps as well as a level 100 Pokemon. So, bottle caps are most easily obtained through the digging duo. Now, if you get tons of watts from digging paw, I recommend spending all of those watts on the digging duo because you get insane amounts of money, insane amounts of rare items, rare bones, which can then cram omatic back into wishing pieces, extra wishing pieces, and then the chance at a bottle cap or even a gold bottle cap. Now, the gold bottle cap can also be earned through doing crazy win streaks, in, not even a win streak, just getting a crazy amount of total wins in the battle tower, as well as participating in the online competitive. So if you go to the battle stadium and you actually get master ball tier or just like a high tier like ultra ball tier, you end up getting bottle caps as a reward. So for playing competitive Pokemon, you get more tools to instantly make more competitive Pokemon. It's a pretty good system. Then you can also like sell comet shards and big nuggets and all the other rewards. Not all of these are going to be from the digging duo because you can also just get some of them through max raid battles. So you can turn around, sell that, make more money, and then you have more resources for competitive Pokemon. Now, before you spend all of your watts at the Digging Duo, you absolutely 100% give 400,000 of them to Honey, because what she does is she upgrades the dojo, and at 400,000, you get the Vitamin Machine. And this is one of the greatest things to ever happen in Pokemon, because you get half off Vitamins. So, you pay 125,000, 
and then you can get 25 vitamins to almost max out a Pokemon. Pokemon's max EVs are going to be 252, so it's technically 26, and if you're baller on money, then that means it's okay to waste the money. If you don't really want to waste too much money, you can also find feathers, so if you have like a muscle feather or only two of them, you can go out and then top off those effort values, and that's what I did with the Grookey. I just gave it 26 protein, maxed it out, 26 hit point up, max it out, and then the Pokemon now has maxed effort values, and you can check that on the Pokemon screen. So, check summary, you go to this, and then you hit the X button. Done. Now, the thing is, if it's white, it shows that all of the effort values have been used up because you also get four bonus effort values to use another stat. I used an iron, that gave me in defense, and then if it's sparkling, then that means that has the full maximum potential. So this Rillaboom has the highest possible hit points with the hyper training and the effort values, and then the highest possible attack because of the same things. So all it needs is a moveset at that point. Now another way you can do EV training is with time skipping, and it kind of depends on your situation. If you just want to get like one Pokemon instantly competitive ready, and you have tons of resources and little patience, then you can just do the method that I showed. But what you can also do are Poke Jobs. Poke Jobs let you put in up to 10 Pokemon to then EV train a single stat. So I can get 10 Pokemon speed stat maxed in a day. I can time skip, which is also going to do it in just a couple minutes, like less than a minute, maybe two minutes with menuing or something, and I can get 10 Pokemon to max speed, and it also costs no money. So if you have a bulk, like if you're doing bulk Pokemon, if you're doing batches of Pokemon, you're training like four or five sweepers at a time for EV training because of breeding or hyper training, then you can put them all into the Poke Jobs, do a time skip, come back and they're max speed, if you have the power items. So doing it alone doesn't give you enough effort values, but it does stack with the power items. So the power anklet would give you, like you make the Pokemon hold the power anklet, you put them into the Poke Jobs, and then after the 24 hours, after the full day, they'll have max in the speed. So you do need extra power anklets, but they're super cheap. Battle points are really easy to get, especially if you're doing restricted sparring, especially if you've already gotten like a lot from playing online, or just kind of like a note. The, the sooner you start, the sooner you engage with everything, in the game of Pokemon Sword and Shield, the more rewards you get. You should be on the ranked ladder, even if you're bad at Pokemon, even if you don't think you're good, you should be on it for experience as well as the rewards that it gives. Doing some of the Battle Tower, that's going to give you a lot of rewards as well. You can get Bottle Caps, Gold Bottle Caps through that. They give you Mint as well, so you can use a Mint to change a Pokemon's nature. If you're just really impatient and you want instant competitive Pokemon, and then you can use Restricted Sparring. Restricted Sparring gives you like 60 Battle Points in you know, a couple minutes if you're doing that typing for the first time. So you can use that to buy multiple of these items, and then you can use that for uh, EV training as well. Now, maybe you're a new player and you don't even know what time skipping is or how to do it. Don't worry, I'm just going to quickly cover it in this video. So what you need is a wishing piece. Outside the dojo, you can find a den, you throw in the wishing piece, and then you have to do a very specific thing. You have to press A on the invite others, wait for it to go through, hit the B button. Well, you don't have to hit the B button exactly in that order, but as long as you're in that when you do a time skip, it's going to make it to where the day advances. So you change the clock on your Nintendo Switch, you go back in. By pressing the B button, you've already like uh, buffered the quit out. And then now a day has passed, so you're getting extra watts from engaging with this den again. And if I had Pokemon in the Rota Rotomi, I'd actually have fully EV trained Pokemon. Just like that. Now, when it comes to getting moves for your Pokemon, things get a little crazy because with this, we have a new move tutor for Armorite Ore. You can, I have many guides on Armorite Ore. You can check those out in the description down below as well. But what I want to do, not Terrain Pulse, I want to give Grassy Glide to the Rillaboom because that is what everyone is talking about right now. Rillaboom, with its hidden ability, sets Grassy Terrain, and then you just go Choice Band, Grassy Glide, and it's absolutely busted. I can just give it a couple of extra like little tech moves and then that is a completely ready to go S tier Pokemon. I also bought myself a choice band. So let's go and get that on Rillaboom and it all comes together. Now, when it comes to getting the actual moveset completed for your Pokemon, that's going to take a little bit of extra work because you're going to have to see what TRs they can learn, what optimal moveset you want, if it's a level up move, if it's a TM, if it's a TR, which dens reward those TRs as 
uh, completion rewards, or if you get lucky and you can find a Watt Trader that has that TR ready for you to purchase, and then you can just talk to this guy right here. He's going to be the move relearner. So say if you have like an overleveled Pokemon and you forgot the move that you need, or it's a level one move, you just talk to this guy, put the move on your Pokemon like that. It's free, no more heart scales. So that's pretty simple. And then when it comes to getting the items, this girl right here is where you can buy the power items, as well as rare candies and PP ups. You can farm for PP up by doing the Roto Lotto plus the time skipping method. So instead of just doing poke, poke jobs, you talk to the Roto Lotto after doing that. That can reward you with PP ups. Destiny Knot, that's good for breeding. These are evolutionary items. And then if you don't have money and you have thousands of battle points, you might be able to buy some of the vitamins through her. Not super recommended, but in desperate times, desperate measures are required. And with this, let's see what we get. Congratulations, Delibird, two digits, free PP up, just in passing. And then the last thing your Pokemon is going to need are competitive items. So you can get most of those in Winden, but once again, it's going to be extra research throughout the Wild Area, throughout the Galar region, throughout the Isle of Armor, through the cram matic You can pretty much combine any of the competitive items that you want, and you can get them that way, or you can just talk to these people and see what they sell. It's like, all right, I need a choice band, buy it for 25 battle points. It's actually pretty affordable compared to other Pokemon games. It's a lot easier to get battle points. So you can get 32 battle points reliably with like a Protean Cinderace. That's pretty much like my big recommendation right now. Is that you get a Protean Cinderace, you give it a Muscle Band, and then you just do the Fire Restricted Sparring. I have a guide on that. You can farm as many battle points as you need to kind of piece together the rest of your team in a very short amount of time. But also you can craft a lot of the items and or just afford it with easy battle points. This is where you buy Mints. There's a Mint Island on the Isle of Armor, so you might be able to save yourself a lot of battle points that way. And then through proper breeding and the usage of synchronized Pokemon, you can have just a base Pokemon and not have to worry about a Mint. But sometimes just have, like you go to a raid. If you go to a raid, there's a four or five IV Pokemon. You don't have to hyper train it because its IVs are perfect. You just use a Mint on it, and then you pretty much have a Pokemon that's ready to go. This guy is going to be for your transfer Pokemon. So if you talk to this guy and you bring a Pokemon from a previous region over that came from like Pokemon Home or Pokemon Bank, he will wipe out the moveset of it, but then you can just make it have a modern moveset and then you can use those Pokemon in ranked. This is recommended if you are going to have like a modern moveset anyways. There's some Pokemon that have transfer only movesets that you do not want to get rid of because at this time there's no way of getting them back. Let's take my... Slurpuff, for example. Slurpuff has Belly Drum. Belly Drum was removed as an egg move in Generation 8. So this thing is tearing it up in unrestricted play, but if I got it, I would never have a way of getting this Pokemon back unless I remade it back in Generation 7. After I've already transferred all my Pokemon out of Generation 7. Same thing goes for Scizor. Roost was not brought back as a tutor move or as a TR. So a lot of Pokemon that had access to the Roost, they don't have anymore. Okay, that Togekiss doesn't have it anyways, but yeah, so there's things taken into consideration. It's going to be way better for me to just remake an entire Scizor, than use that guy, get rid of the Roost forever, and then effectively have kind of the same moveset back. So, I want to keep this for unrestricted play. But I think that's pretty much going to be it for this guide. I just want to show you guys, like, what you have access to to kind of whip together a team or finish off a team if you've done some breeding, if you just are, like, trying to loosely get some competitive stuff together. It's mostly just play the game. If you interact with a lot of raid dens, you're going to have a ton of candies. So you don't even need six IV dittos to have, like, the ability to make a team in a very short amount of time. So you can use those resources, turn your money into instant EV training. Just be aware that you can also use the Roto Lotto, or not the Roto, you can use Roto Lotto for PP up. You can also use the Rotomi and Poke Jobs to get entire teams EV trained in short amounts of time as well. And then you just have to look up one of my moveset guides, find out how you actually get access to that move. Sometimes it's going to be through egg moves. Fortunately, breeding has been made a lot easier in this generation, so there's some quality of life there. And then the rest of it's just kind of playing Pokemon and getting competitive. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.